In 1979, songwriter Randy Brooks and husband and wife duo Elmo and Patsy Trigg Shropshire created a little song called Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. Since then, the song has exploded in popularity and is either your most hated or most loved Christmas song. It got so popular that in the year 2000, it was adopted into an animated movie by Warner Bros. Some odd years later, it became the favorite holiday movie of a little lad named Royal Blue 13. Yeah, that's my real legal name. Every Christmas break, I would excitedly turn on the TV, tune into Cartoon Network, and watch this movie whenever it came on. It's kind of funny, even though I would watch this movie multiple times for several years, I barely remember what happens in it. I guess I started to get a little too old to watch it and decided to start watching Yogg's Cast instead. I haven't been able to rewatch it whenever it airs because I haven't really had cable television in years, but with the power of determination and the internet, I am able to relive my childhood. Oh my god, this movie is a ride. So our main characters are the titular Grandma Spankenheimer, her grandson Jake, who is so generic in both personality and looks that if you gave him glasses hey he'd be a Nintendo here. YouTuber, and the evilest villain in animation history, Cousin Mel. I think I used to have a crush on her when I was younger, but I think that was just because she was a curvy woman. But then I became a man, and started to look past her looks to see the malice in her eyes. The movie just gets right to it. Literally the first scene shows Grandma just getting absolutely destroyed by Santa. Like no holds barred, flatten Grandma in the first minute. But as for Grandpa, we believe. Then we flash back a couple days before to Jake helping his grandma at her store because Cousin Mel's being the cruelest villain in cinema. You can stop right there, that shoplifting missy. <laughs> now, what seems to be the problem? <laughs> problem? No problem. We see her descend further as the film goes on. We then jump over to the Spankenheimer house where the family is dunking on Jake for believing in Santa and wanting a real Christmas tree instead of a crappy blow up one even though he's like 11. Like damn, he's still young, let him be a kid. Wish they had Christmas trees like that when I was a boy. Here we go again. Yeah, shut up, Granddad. Go back to complaining about liberals while you drink yourself to a stupor like you usually do every Christmas. Then we jump back to the store again. This movie has really weird pacing. They honestly should have just combined the two store scenes and then hop over to the house so it wouldn't feel like whiplash. Anyway, Mr. Businessman walks into the store and is like, Well, Grandma Elfenheimer. Mr. Austin Troll Bucks. I don't suppose you're dressed that way to be <sighs> Billy Goat's Gruff to the kids. No, I did it so you'd listen to my offer to buy your store. And Cousin Mel, the embodiment of Lucifer, wants to go through with the deal and sell the store because she thinks she'll get the money for some reason. I guess she's just hoping she'll be in Grandma's will. When presented with the offer, Grandma says, No. And Cousin Mel is pissed. Then we're back at the house again to return to right before the prologue to where we saw Grandma get killed. This is where we also get our first, I guess, music video of the movie. There are several instances where the plot just stops to play short songs from the creators of the original Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer song. This one is about how Grandma's fruitcake is just absolutely putrid and everyone hates it, which is weird because every other scene with her fruitcake shows people loving it. Anyways, when we cut back to the actual movie, Cousin Mel, the She-Devil, pulls out some purple vial and pours it into the fruitcake, and despite seeing it, Jake just does nothing about it. We then reach the point where Grandma does indeed get run over by a reindeer. They do this weird thing when Grandma leaves the house where the characters explain what's happening while the song also explains what's happening. She'd been drinking too much eggnog. You've been drinking too much eggnog. And we begged her not to Please, go. Please, don't go! We're begging! But she forgot her medication. Besides, I left my medication at the store. And she staggered the out the door into the snow. Even though everyone's still awake, Santa's shouting over the rooftops at the top of his lungs and then the incident happens. Walking home from our oh, house Grandma, Christmas Eve. Grandma, watch out! You can say there's no such thing as Santa. We later find out it's because she's holding the fruitcake cousin Mel spiked with reindeer nip. They never really explain why she thought she could get rid of Grandma with the reindeer nip because she doesn't believe in Santa, so I guess she just got really lucky. Of course, after seeing this, Jake flips out and tries to get his family to go outside and help her, but they literally just don't care. Uh, I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? I was too busy watching Grandma get run over by a reindeer-drawn sleigh. Yes! What a sight! Sleigh come out of nowhere. Grandma takes a header into the snowbank. 
Slay vanishes like the ghost of Christmas past. What the? You sadistic? Your wife is dead on the pavement and you're too busy getting drunk off your eggnog to do anything about it? Even though Jake is genuinely fearful, the family just says, Oh well, let's wait till tomorrow, who cares, we all hate grandma anyways. The police show up and the group continues to clown on Jake even though a loved one is actually missing. Okay then, I'll just put it down a slay, hecular hit and run. Ooh, what's the code for that? You should remember that one. It's a 1224. Oh, right, 1224. <laughs> I get it. 1224, day before Christmas. Just a minute, Sherlock. Even though there is clear evidence that Grandma was gutted by a reindeer last night, no one does anything about it or even reacts that much. For the next year, everyone except Jake just kind of feels a bit bummed about Grandma being missing. But then, that dirty witch cousin Mel tricks Grandpa into selling the store to Mr. Business Boy, which leads to the best, smoothest transition to a song in film history. I'll cure your sorrow. We'll spruce up the store, order new merchandise, hire a baker. It's right here in these papers. All you have to do is sign. Sing? No, sign. Sure. So, sign. I'd rather sing. Jake finds out about the sale and he ain't having that, so he decides to email Santa to ask him for help to find Grandma, and it works somehow? The movie implies that everyone in the city doesn't believe in Santa except for Jake and his grandparents. None! Not a single letter from Cityville! It's as if they're too busy with their prefabricated, mass-produced lives to need me anymore! Excuse me? But if you can literally email the man, you'd think more people would believe in him. It's then revealed that Santa kidnapped Grandma and the accident has given her amnesia. They later see that he took her to give her medical attention, but he literally just leaves a note like he accidentally scratched her car and not mangled her in the driveway. Who are you? Oh, I better get you medical attention. Grincy, leave a note explaining what happened. And he took her away from her family for an entire year. If Cousin Mel is Jafar, then Santa is Iago. He's just as responsible for all the mishaps in this movie. He could have easily dropped her off at the ER even at her house. Anyways, Santa's right-hand man, right-hand elf, whose name is Quincy, goes against Santa's wishes and takes his sleigh to find Jake. I have a better idea. Okay, that last part didn't actually happen. He explains to Jake what happened a year ago and brings him to the North Pole to reunite him with his grandma. Grandma! He tries to bring her back to stop the sale and Santa explains how he kidnapped this poor old woman to Mr. Money Man because they think this will work and not make Santa look like a sociopath. Meanwhile, Cousin Mel, hatred and malice incarnate, and her lawyer kidnapped the grandma to keep her locked up in a cabin in the woods. Somehow they use Grandma's absence and Santa's confession to charge him with all sorts of crimes. Since Grandma is nowhere to be found, and the man in the red suit here admitted he ran over her, I demand that you have Santa arrested for the disappearance of Grandma. No! Back at the cabin, the two wine ants discuss all the money they're gonna get and sing the best song in the movie. This song is so out of nowhere and weirdly catchy that if you watch this movie you will never forget this song. It's from here that the family starts to suspect that cousin Mel, murderer of Archduke Ferdinand, might have something to do with grandma's disappearance. Jake's dog, Doofus, yes he named his dog Doofus, it's stupid I know, Jake's dog Doofus sniffs out the trail to grandma. They then save her and jog her memory with fruitcake at the family store. Jake, what am I doing here? Grandma, you remember? Oh yeah! What? What, what, what warranted that? The rest of the movie does this weird court case thing kids movies do sometimes. Like B-Movie did the same thing, but I remember as a kid finding it really boring when a movie did this. Kids don't like court cases, they don't really understand them, so I don't know why they keep putting them in movies. Anyways, somehow Jake and Grandma make Cousin Mel admit to her crimes and manage to prove Santa's innocence, 
Even though he literally did everything they're charging him with. He did run over grandma, he did show negligence with informing the family, and he did kidnap her. Just because Cousin Mel spiked the fruitcake with reindeer nip and disposed of the sorry I murdered your grandma kiddo note doesn't mean Santa's innocent. They're both in the wrong. All right, I admit it. Yes, yes, I did it. I hid the note. And? And I made Grandpa sign over his rights to the store. And? I'm behind this evil trial. And? I hate the goody-goody feelings of Christmas! Cousin Mel, partner of Richard Nixon, gets sent to prison for her war crimes. The Spankenheimers are reunited, and Santa finishes what he started. Whoa! Whoa! What? Oh, no! Reindeer nip! Not again! We fall down, but we get up. Overall, I thought the movie was pretty entertaining. Is it necessarily good? Not really. I know I was making fun of it and pointing out some holes in the story, but if you're a kid, you'll enjoy it because it's a somewhat competent Christmas movie with wacky characters. And if you're an adult, you'll like it because it's one of those funny bad movies you watch with friends when you're bored. So yeah, if you can find it on TV or online during the holidays, I honestly recommend watching it. Look, I finally talked about animation like I said it would in my introduction video. It's not the first thing I planned on covering animation-wise, but I couldn't just ignore the Christmas spirit in there and not do a holiday video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and happy holidays. <laughs>